Can you just explain the FICO? So FICO is Fair Isaac Credit Company. They're the one that creates the whole score from all three viewers for you. They use the latest Vantage, whether it'll be Vantage 10, Vantage 8 that we're using. We're in Vantage 10. They use the latest Vantage. So what is it? What is that? Because people might not know what so Vantage is. So it's the way the score is created, the data is put into the score. So they don't pick every single, um, like let's say <clears throat> your American Express card. Certain cards they pick up and they create the score. So department, that's why I speak about department store cards. They don't help your credit that much. So stay away from them. Stay into the Visa, the MasterCards, and so forth. Those are the ones that create the scores for you. And then your payment history, how much new credit you have, um, utilization, that's all that's calculated into it. Okay, okay. So, all right. So as far as like there's different factors that determine your credit score, right? Right, correct. What are some of the, the key factors that people should be aware of? Uh, one of the major factors, and I see this on everyone's credit report, is utilization. Mm -hmm. um, just like you were talking about, um, yep. you know, you, you need to keep your utilization under thirty percent. Once you start hitting thirty-one, thirty-two percent of that utilization, your score drops significantly, and it takes two months, two billing cycles for it to go up, unless you call the bank, like you didn't ask yeah. them just to do a courtesy for you. Right. A lot of people don't know how to do that, right? Or they don't, they don't know they could do that. So one of them is uh, keep the utilization very low, thirty percent or below. Um, let's say you have five cards. And <clears throat> excuse me. And you instead of you putting all the charges on one card, split it across three cards to keep it under thirty percent. Your score will stay high. Second thing is increase six increase a year. If you do more than that, your score drops. Each increase two point five points, mm. right? Um, and banks only give you what they see other banks give you. So if you apply for in your scenario, if you do that now, it would have been hard for you to get all those uh, cards, right? Because banks are tight on giving out credit. Um, so banks only give you what they see other banks are giving you. So let's say you apply for Citibank or Chase today. You got denied. There's an increase there. If right. another bank don't see a card open up, they're not going to extend the credit to you. Mm. Right? So new credit. All right. So 30% 30, so, 30 percent, so if you have $10,000 in credit available, only use $3,000. Correct. Correct. That's Correct. pretty much in a nutshell. Yeah. All right. Now, wait, one last thing also. Like if you're trying to build your score and you're in the 650, you're lingering around the 650 range, you shouldn't pay off your card in full every month. Because the bank needs to make the bank needs to make a little bit of in, interest off of you to report okay on your credit report. And you see a history. It's, correct. Yeah. It's only until you're like a seven fifty or higher score you can pay your card off in full because your score is already built. Right. But if you're in a six fifty and you're trying to raise it, don't pay the card off in can full. Can you just much. explain that? Because that's actually the first time I'm hearing that in detail. Like, so you don't pay off the credit don't card in full? Don't pay it in full every month. Like every other month you could pay it off in full. Why? Why not because, every month? Because the bank wouldn't report. Uh, okay on the credit report on the slot that says okay it'll say no data okay no data is like no credit okay mm -hmm. so you had to like trick the system that'll make a little bit of interest off of you because remember the banks in the business are making money right right um and that's why they charge these interest rates so they want to see that you're a valued customer over a period of time exactly right so if i have a thousand dollars and i max out a thousand and i pay a thousand that's not really showing anything. Exactly. And that's not helping them because they're not making money. Right. So there's no incentive for them to report okay on the credit report. You have a report to have a zero balance, but you don't have that, that okay, that green mark on your credit report. It's, it says no data. Okay. And the only way you see that is actually from the credit report from the bureaus. Mm. You wouldn't see it on like a mortgage report or in your online report. It's when you pull the actual report from the bureaus is when you see that. All right. All right. So now, all right. So you got some framework and then you got some interesting stories for me and Troy, but now we're going, we're going to dive deep into the... To the, to the world of credit, and um, yeah, we're going to hopefully drop some gems that can uh, save you guys a lot of time and money. Yeah. Pens and pads, get ready. All right, so now we're going to get into the part that most people aren't aware of on their credit part that are actually right. happening, um, mm -hmm. but you know, when you make a late payment, or you miss a payment, or you miss a few, um, there's something that's called a derogatory. That's correct. Um, so, that's a, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you want to explain the impact that that has and some examples of it? Well, the derogatory section, everyone has that on a credit report, right? So, where do you make a late payment? And by the way, the, the way they report late payments these days have changed. Mm -hmm. Because back then, right after 30 days, the next day you were late. Now they give you a 30-day grace period. Oh. But if the payment is not made before 5 p.m., the 29th of the next month, then you get reported the first 30 days. That's a derogatory, right? Mm -hmm. um, collections, charge off. Let's say you had a credit card for five, six years. You know, you were paying it for three, four years. You ran into a hardship. You missed, you couldn't keep up with the payments anymore. You missed six months of payments. It gets charged off. That's a derogatory. Uh, public records, mm -hmm. um, lawsuits, judgments. Uh, do, do student loans fall on there as well? Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. One, here's the thing about student loans <clears throat> everyone keeps deferring the student loans. 
Yeah, but that was right? just, yeah, it's, it's and kind of that's tricky. actually you shouldn't be doing that. You should at least try to make some sort of payment plan with them because now one it affects your credit, your DTI. Because let's say you took out six thousand, mm -hmm. you deferred it for five years. Now your loan is ten thousand. Right. Now you're upside down with the loan. One, two, your late payments also they report on the the uh, the credit report is derogatory. You make if you miss a late payment. So I don't suggest anyone try to put the payment in deferment for too long. But if you have to. Make sure you don't have a gap where it comes out of the firm and you're supposed to make a payment and go back into the firm. Mm. You need to avoid that. Right? Yeah, it's tough because, I mean, we covered it pretty extensively. Like, we have millions of yeah. Americans that are in student It's a trillion debt, dollar deal. Trillion dollar de industry. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the first thing is like the firm, but it only right. lasts six to 12 months, man. Correct. Correct. Right? And that, that can affect you long term, right? When it's Correct. time for you to now get the home, like, student loan payment has affected you. Try to get the car, right? They're going right. to see that on that derogatory. Because they calculate the monthly payment into your income, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, you only make, I don't know, $2,000 a month or bi-weekly, whatever. Yeah. And um, your monthly payments are all your expenses, including rent, food, whatever. Not not food, sorry. Rent, bills, credit cards mm -hmm. is 1500 Now you add your student loans in there, and now you only have $200 left. Right. How are you going to get get a mortgage with the extra money going to come in? You know right. So it's a debt that... You really don't want to carry with you, but we have to. Right. But you want to try to at least make some kind of payment towards it. So with the derogatories, um, <coughs> okay. So some of the common derogatory items are late payments. Late payments, credit cards. Even I did a video about when you move out of your apartment, mm. how to exit your apartment, your Verizon bill, your Con Edison bill, all that goes on your credit report. There's a way to shut everything off before you walk out of that apartment so it doesn't travel. How do you, so what's the way that you so do that? So basically, make a checklist of everything that you had when you were living in that apartment. Cable, phone, water, whatever. Mm -hmm. A week before you move out, you're supposed to call this company and let them know you're leaving to disconnect the service on this date mm -hmm. and send you the bill. Right? A lot of people just walk out and leave everything. Right. The Verizon bill, cable bill, you're supposed to return those boxes. If you don't, you get charged. You're renting those boxes. You don't own them. That's right. a stupid way of having a debt on your credit report domestic credit up. Right? Yeah. You Points. can just return the boxes, <laughs> pay the final bill. Right. Yeah. Right. Not for sure. So, all right. So, what about child support? Sorry, buddy. Yeah, we are gonna get there. <laughs> what, what about tax liens? So, tax lien shows up on your credit, but it was up to two years ago they stopped reporting it, but it stays in the public record. So, let's say you're applying for a mortgage. When they pull for your mortgage report, they pull Lexus Nexus. Your tax liens show up there, so it can affect you from getting the um the mortgage, but it's not in your credit report anymore. But it stays in public record. What's Lexus Nexus? Lexus Nexus is a company out in Atlanta that carries all public record data for everyone. Okay. 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 For all the court system, bankruptcies, everything. So what about credit card judgments? A lot of people have credit card judgments. Oh, man, listen, that's a good topic. And how that happens, um, you know, let's say you have a credit card. I go back to Chase because I deal with them every day, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you had a Chase credit card for five years. Three years you paid it. After that, you went into harsh and we couldn't pay it no more. And it went to collections. Mm -hmm. And um, you didn't even pay it then. Right before the statute of limitation comes to an end. Every debt has a statute of limitation. Mm -hmm. Every state has a statute of limitation. Right before the statute of limitation ends, it goes to an attorney. They pick it up and obtain a default judgment against you renewable for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, 10 years? 10 years. But it can, be, it can be wiped off. All right. Even if you, so if you have the 10-year judgment, it can still be like wiped off before that 10 years. Is Absolutely. Right? If it's resolved. Correct. If you, don't, if you don't resolve it, then it can renew again. How do you resolve it? So you got to make an agreement with the judge, but not, not with the judge, with the attorney that's suing you. They can either go back into court and resolve it or resolve it over the phone. Make an agreement, say, listen, the debt's 5000 You know, I can give you 2000 call it a day. All right, so the debt has to be resolved. Okay. Resolved. That, that made me think about something because we, let, we keep it real on the show, right? So usually in our community, what happens is that you fall on the hard times, you don't pay your bills, they call you. And you don't answer the phone call. Yeah. You try to just and ignore. That's the bad thing. You that, that's the problem. Block the number. But that's what that's what, that's what we're gonna do. That's what, that's what we're gonna do. That's how it turns into a judgment. Right. So right. that's the so, start of it. All right. What's your advice for people that are doing that? Like I always tell people, you can't avoid problems. You have Correct. to face it, right? So and then especially credit card companies, they'll work with you if you, if Correct. you know, absolutely. But yeah. people still mentally, I guess it's just. Nobody really wants to be embarrassed, right. or they don't want to even kind of go through that if they know that they don't have the money to pay it. So you have all right. You you got yourself in in a bad situation. You can't pay your bill. You're late on your bills. What what do you do? Like what's the best? So way here's to the thing. Um, it's funny we we talking about this. A lot of people don't want to resolve the debt because they've been told that you don't have to pay your debt back. It's gonna disappear. <laughs> a lot of people. That's what a lot of people say. You know, oh my friends, I don't gotta pay it back. Is it true? Do I have to? Yes, you have to. Yeah. Right. Um, but. 
you have to answer the phone, man. Like you can. They'll work with you. Yeah. They're willing to work with you. This is no. That's the, I'm just the work, willing to work with you part is 100 yeah, percent valid. I have friends, and, and my, I mean personally, I've done it myself. Like I've had, I've seen my interest rate go up when I was in college mm -hmm. to a point I was like, wait, I owe thirty thousand right. dollars. I'm 21, right, right. right? And I'm like. I don't know what to do. So right. I, I'm like, I, I literally was listening to Hot 97, I promise you. And I heard um, Angie was talking about debt consolidation. Yeah. And I called this company. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right, well, we'll do it. And I did it. And like, rather than paying it 30, right, they, they're, the bank is looking like, hey, can we get some money? Right. right? So I'm like, yeah. all right, we agreed to an amount. And I'm like, all right, I'll pay that off. There's a difference between debt consolidation and debt settlement. Yeah. Uh, I am not a debt, into debt consolidation. I don't think anyone should do it. And I'll tell you why. Because yeah, once the debt's charged off... You have to pay something, but not the full thing. But consumers don't know that. Right. So they go to debt consolidating, where they make you pay the whole debt over three years. You kind of just paid the debt twice. Yeah. Well, because it went insurance paid it, or however the bank resolved mm -hmm. it, and now you pay the whole thing back again to the to the banks. It's once the debt's charged off, it's better to settle the debt and move on. You owe five grand, we get that down to eighteen hundred. Right. I would rather pay that and move on because your credit is still shot. Yeah. And you're not going to get the card back. Right? So yeah. I haven't paid twice.